I thought moving my speakers up against my wall would solve my bass problems. It did, and it made them worse at the same time. Today, I'm gonna to show you exactly what happened and how Sonarworks can help fix a lot of the problems in your room, but can't fix everything, and how you can get real pro sound without fighting your gear. My name is Wilson Harwood, and I am a professional soundproof studio designer and acoustician based in Nashville. And I want to make sure that you guys understand how you can get the most out of your listening position and your speaker placement. So let's dive in. First thing we need to figure out is what is SBIR or speaker boundary interference response. Now, it's really common for people to say, hey, pull your speakers far off the wall. I've even heard people say, pull your speakers three feet off the wall, because that's gonna help fix your low end bass problems. And there's some truth to that, but there's also a lot of falsehood. And this comes into the idea of speaker boundary interference response, which is when you get what's called comb filtering by different waveforms in your low end speakers hitting the front wall and then coming back to your ears at a different time than the direct low end signal coming directly from your, your speakers. Now that's kind of complicated. So you can see this visual image here that kind of explains it. And I want you to notice in the image that the little waveforms that are lined up there close to the listener's front of their face are not exactly in phase, meaning they're not lining up perfectly. They're out of what we call, they're actually out of phase. And what that does is it can actually make it so you don't hear certain frequencies as accurately as you should. If they're completely out of phase, you actually don't hear that frequency at all. So you can actually have problems with your low end where you don't even hear certain parts of the bass frequencies in your mix. Yes, it can be that bad. Now, the number one thing I want you to realize here is that Delays in comb filtering are caused by the low frequency sounds hitting parts of your room and bouncing back and coming to your ear at a slightly delayed time than the direct uh, sounds coming from your speakers. And this is called comb filtering. And comb filtering cannot be corrected by Sonarworks or Trinov or these equalization changes in your speakers alone. That can only be solved by proper acoustic room treatment and proper room design from the get-go. So now I wanna show you guys um, a few different examples of my sound ID reference. This is from the, the uh, company Sonarworks, which I used for my room correction software on my speakers. Now this was the original graph here, so I'm gonna show you this, and it looks pretty good, and it actually wasn't that bad. And this was what I did when I had my speakers pulled a little bit off from the walls, not super far, maybe about like six inches, um, and I had my listening position way farther back in the room. And it was a great space. I made a lot of records using this. And as you can see, there's like a big bass uh, bump here in the low end and then uh, some dips down here. But for the most part, it was fairly flat. And But there was something missing. And I wanted to, to change my speaker setup uh, by using what's known as the bass hunter technique. So with the bass hunter technique, I actually listened I tore everything out of my listening position and I put my speakers in the corner, as you can see here in this video, and I listened carefully and I found a spot that I felt sounded like the most accurate bass. It was really, really nice and crisp and clear. And then I set up my speakers around that listening position. And what I also did is I pushed my speakers right up against the wall because I wanted to minimize that S. BIR, the speaker boundary interference. Even pulling your speakers off the wall even a little bit will create more of that comb filtering effect. So by pushing our speakers right up against the front wall, we are minimizing it as much as we can. But what I didn't realize is that pushing our speakers right up against the front wall creates another effect, which is the natural bass extension, meaning a boost in your bass from having your speakers so close to the front wall that the wall actually projects this, the bass right back to your ears. Even though there's not as much of a time delay issue, we're actually getting another physical issue where we're just getting a bass boost. And so let me show you this diagram right now. So this was my initial sonar works after I had got this new uh, listening position. And I was like, oh shoot, <laughs> I've made my listening position worse, but not so fast. I had made it both better and worse at the same time, which is what I said at the beginning of this video. And how can that be? That's paradoxical. Well, let me explain. 
So what we were getting here is no longer an SBIR problem, it's more of a problem with a proximity effect to the front wall, which I can correct at the source by rolling, actually use the trim function on the back of my KH310s, which are uh, a Neumann brand speaker, and Neumann does a great job of giving you a lot of control over the back end there, and I dropped it off so my low end was down uh, 2.5 dB, and my low mids were down 1.5 dB. So this is not a ton of change, but it was in enough to transform um, this next diagram I did after making those changes. So let me show you that. Notice how it dropped down. We still have a similar profile because the shape of the room, now my listening position, the shape of it is the same, but we have less of a big jump here. But you don't really want to have around 6 dB or more uh, and we're kind of hitting that there, but for the most part, a lot of our other stuff is tighter in here, and we actually have a roll off in the low end. So this, we can look at the calibration, which is going to show now how Sonarworks is changing it. So this is what Sonarworks is actually doing from an EQ standpoint in my speakers. They're doing the reverse of what my speakers are being measured in the room. So it's boosting here and it's cutting down here, but overall it's really not too bad and it's a very flat frequency response. And you can even say the simulated after here shows, uh, let me just clean this up so you guys can see this a little bit better. The simulated after is showing how flat that response will be in reality. Um, and I've actually, I'll talk about this in a second, but I actually use this dry wet knob. So it's at 75. If I do this, it'll actually get super, super flat. And you might say, well, Wilson, that's 100% what you should do. We want the flattest possible sound. Well, not so fast. Here's another pro level move that you guys might not know about is that I actually like the sound of my speakers around the 75 degree dry wet mix knob just like when you're mixing a song you can you know mix your compression in with a dry wet mix knob or you can use reverb and dry wet mix that this is the same thing for our eq curve now i personally used a reference track and listened to that reference track and i listened and mixed that dry wet knob to the exact point where I felt like the low end bass was more accurate to what I actually think it is in the mix because I know that song so well from listening to it in other places like my car or other stereos or my headphones. So that is a pro move there is actually getting your dry wet mix knob to be a little bit more uh, pleasing to your ears. If you feel like it's too flat, too dead, and you're not gonna have fun mixing in it, well, you're probably right. Give it a little bit of that more excitement. Uh, and I think that's a good idea in general and your mixes will still translate just fine. We're talking about micro adjustments here. Another thing that I've noticed is that, you know, there shouldn't be a huge difference in the sound between your calibration enabled and disabled. We really want our room to be fully optimized before we even use Sonarworks. I always tell people, Sonarworks is the cherry on top when you are finalizing your listening position. It is not the first thing you do. It is not the thing you use before you have a bass traps in your corners and treat your first reflection points and everything like that and dial in your listening position with the bass hunter technique. It is the last thing you do. Um, so that's important to realize. Another thing that I want to point out here that I learned is that, it, you know, having my original listening position farther back, it could have looked like a flatter curve. Let's go back to that real quick. If we go back over here and we look at um, this original curve here, you can see how it's still a pretty flat curve. And we can even look at the um, before and you can see how that was. But the problem here is that this graph is only showing us so much information. What it didn't show is that my speakers were wider and I was sitting farther back in the room, which means I was hearing more of the room modes, meaning the low end frequency problems that are having from coming from the first reflection points off my of my low end bass notes hitting the walls and coming back to my ears. Now my acoustic treatment can do a really good job of that, but unless you have acoustic panels that can absorb down to the 30 hertz range, there's really no way that you're getting exact perfect absorption, especially in home recording studios. So I actually think it's a better idea to have a tighter, uh, you know what they call a narrow field listening 
position because then you're hearing the direct sound hitting your ears and not so much of the sound coming around in your room. Now this is a give and take and it's something that you'll have to decide for yourself. If you want a larger, wider listening position, then you just have to make sure that you have very good low end absorption in your room um, so that you can go farther back into the room. In general though, using that bass hunter technique and finding your listening position in your room is naturally going to be the best place for you to sit and have the best quality accurate sound possible. So in conclusion, this is what I found in this really interesting, fun journey. Uh, I love using my own studio as a testing ground for the physics and understanding so that when I'm working with my clients, I can help you guys understand this at an even deeper and deeper and deeper level and try to dispel some of the myths that people will tell you in acoustics that are such hard fact truths there. They're like, you must pull your speakers three feet off the wall or never put your speakers right up against the wall. This is telling you guys in real time that you can put your speakers right up against the wall you just need to adjust your speakers in the back so that you don't get that bass response that's so heavy. And don't let Sonarworks do all the heavy lifting if you have it. Because what happened when I had my speakers close to the wall and didn't adjust the bass is Sonarworks had to do over 6 dB of low end correction, which made the mix sound a little bit more smeared because there was phase issues with so much EQ correction and it just didn't sound as good. Once I adjusted that, not only did the Sonarworks graph look better but it sounded better in general i would say this is one of the best mix positions i've had and i've had many 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 different mix positions over the years i've done this many times many different studios so i really really like this approach that where I've done the bass hunter, hunter technique, I've actually got a gigantic cloud over my head as well, which is helping with the low end. And having my speakers up against the wall, I actually kind of like it. Now, the only thing that could be better is if I actually surface mounted my speakers in a very, very stiff wall, which uh, maybe one day I'll do it, but I'm not totally sure. It's not really something that I would recommend for most home recording studios uh, because we can do a lot more with just adjusting our listening position. And, and maybe over time you want to widen your speakers or you want to bring them closer together or you want to sit farther back. And so if you put your speakers in a fixed position on the wall, uh, you don't have that option anymore. All right, everybody, I hope this video was extremely helpful in understanding a little bit more about low end control in your room, the importance of using uh, your listening position and listening for the correct listening position using the bass hunter technique, which if you don't know that already, do a little Google, Google search on YouTube. There's a lot of info out there. And just in general, understanding your monitors. Should you use those roll off switches? Should you not use them? How far should you put your monitors off the front wall? All of that is something I hope you have learned a little bit more about after watching this. Again, I'm Wilson Harwood. I am a professional studio designer and acoustician based in Nashville, Tennessee. I do this for a living. I design recording studios for people all over the world and soundproof spaces in general. And I just want to make sure you guys have a little gift for watching this if you stayed this long. I do have a free acoustic treatment guide. If you're going down this journey, again, acoustic treatment is the starting place. So this is my no messing around straight to the basics acoustic treatment guide get you started it's having a great sounding room to download that right away just go to soundproofyourstudio.com acoustic for those of you who are on this journey and maybe want a little help maybe want a fresh acoustic treatment guide from a professional or even want a soundproof room definitely reach out to me on my website. Just go to soundproofyourstudio.com and you can click on the book a call button and I'd be happy to jump on a 30 minute Zoom call with you to talk about your project. All right, I'll see you all later. Thanks so much for watching and uh, more soundproofing and room acoustic information coming to you next week.